Thank you for another coming. Thank you for coming to another episode of His Wife, Her Husband. I am Shamika, his wife. And I am Patrick, her husband. And um, go ahead. <laughs> and our purpose is to help you build and sustain your marriage from a biblical perspective. Amen. I just took over. That's okay. I'm so sorry. It's all right. It's, it's called all excited. Right. <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, if if you guys didn't know, Shamika, we always say this, but. Typically, it's, it's always an issue that's, that's going on. Life happens. Um, and, and originally, when we, when we decided to do this channel, this YouTube thing, if you believe your marriage is in need of coaching, Shamika and I are certified marriage and life coaches. Just log into our website, www.hiswifeherhusband.net, to book your discovery call. Wives, if you are looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, Put his wife in the notes section. Husbands, if you are looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, put her husband in the notes section. Husbands and wives, if you are looking for marriage coaching as a couple, put his wife, her husband in the notes section. Remember, our purpose is to help you build and sustain your marriage from a biblical perspective. So go on over to www.hiswifeherhusband.net to schedule your discovery call today. Um, it, it was really, and you guys have, if you've heard in our videos, it was really about helping marriages, about finding uh, solutions to the problems that we have, about finding problems to the solutions that we have either been through mm. or we've heard and helped people get through yeah. or deal with because some people, the, the marriage didn't work out the way um, we were all hoping it would work out. But but I can say at least the people did everything necessary to make it work. And then some people are still working through it. Yeah. And the marriage is still not, but they're, they're yet holding on and they're committed, uh, mm -hmm. committed to working and making mm -hmm. sure that it's not them at the end of the day. Uh, and I say that to say because I did not know that when we started this channel that some of the things that we have been facing – that we would face. And so wh why am I saying all that? Because uh, we'll take time to deal with our family when issues arise that, man, that are just hard to get over, that we're not doing this channel or we're not doing these videos for, like, for popularity, for, like, it's kind of mm -hmm. strange, but not for notoriety. We're not this... Like, we're not doing it to be popular, to be somebody, or to be the new family, or the next new power couple, or anything like that. Like, it really is for us a ministry that we are using this particular platform that all kinds of people are using for all kinds of reasons. Yes, good. And so it was like, okay, how do we talk to as many people? Because we kept getting some of the same questions over and over again throughout the years of our marriage. Uh, so it was like, well, okay, what can we do that can get the message out to as many people because it can't be just the people in our circle in Memphis, Tennessee that's going through these issues. So, hey, how do we do this? And that's when we started the YouTube channel. Yeah. And then uh, just watching or doing my homework, there was one guy that gave good information. I was so happy to hear it. And it only solidified my thought process about making the videos. Mm -hmm. That sometimes life will come into play mm. and don't allow because a lot of youtubers get burnt out because mm -hmm. they're so busy trying to crank the video crank the video because the act which is true the algorithms do, do happen and so when you guys come in and you like and you share it does help the video but i don't want to be i don't want to be that person that's just chasing gotta, the I gotta algorithm crank, i gotta, crank, yeah. I gotta crank another video i got because they're algorithm you really can't understand the algorithm i think i don't think you can mm. Because it changes all the time, but yeah, but this is this is so this is not done because we're trying to be the new power couple or whatever. Like this is really done from a heart where I think this is Service. our purpose, yeah, uh, for God, yeah, to to serve God and to serve people. And so, go ahead. I would say that this is our uh, basin and towel. You know, this is our way of washing feet. You know, mm -hmm. it's like this is our service, and this is something that many people may not 
want to do. Like, you you know, when it comes to public speaking, when it comes to putting, you know, your life happenings out there, it's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at the statistics and they are against you, you know, right. but, you know, you have faith and it is encouraging you, like, go for it, go for it. Like, yeah. you've experienced this good thing. And so you turn and you try to do as best you can to make, their journey or their stay with you or their stay here on earth a lot more pleasant. And so the least I can do is wash your feet. Yeah. And so, and, and that's not against anybody who's decided that this is a business for them. That's, that's good too. And then, so therefore you have a different approach to it or the case may be. So I don't know if you, it could be like you just come up with excuses. I don't know, but for, for whatever. So I'm not, again, I'm not knocking the people that are doing it and they are really finding their financial their, niche their fin yeah. Yeah. or their Which groove. Is, yeah. If it happens that way for us as well, we're not going to knock it. I'm not going to turn it down. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just, just that giving that you the, the kind purpose. of, that wasn't the initial purpose, yeah, right? It wasn't a But it doesn't mean, trait. let me tell you something about Christianity or Christians. So I, I love Christian hip hop, but listen, I'm not going to listen to your song just because it's a Christian song. It's still, I, st I, I still need you to put in the work to, to know how to, to do your beats and know how to f uh, switch flows and make it make it make sense. So I'm saying we're gonna do everything within our powers to make sure we put out quality and videos, excellent content, yeah, excellent content. But initially, that's not the reason why. But so anyway, you that's said a so good you, ramble. You said no, that's not a ramble. That was real good. And you said something that was good too. You know. It, it, it in just what the couple of years that we've been here, like when we were young adults and we were teenagers, this platform was not available to mm -hmm. us. I'm glad and it was. So we see the opportunity that mm -hmm. it has afforded us. And so God has given us the courage. He's given us the confidence. He's given us the, you know, the unction to go, or let me, the unction to go forth, the power to go forth. Mm -hmm. And so we said, well, let's do it. You yeah. know, like, like, Lord, if you say go, we'll go. Yeah. And we are using what's in our hand. What's mm -hmm. in our hand right now is the podcast equipment. Right. It is our voice. It is uh, our experiences. This is what we're going with. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so I know that uh, technology gets a very bad reputation, has a be very re mm -hmm. bad reputation, but it's something, that, and I'm one that was That's opposed. Especially people who don't like technology. Yeah. yeah, and Patrick will tell you, I was totally opposed to engaging. In t I'm, I'm a lot better. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm a lot better now. I've been through some coaching, and I see that this is technology is a tool that is used to help uh, propel and amplify your message. Yeah. Why wouldn't we? That's like, are you crazy? Like yeah. even, and, and you know we say from a biblical perspective, so in my mind how it's designed is that I see moments that we're having here on earth and I think about the, 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 the message that the Lord has put in the script. But when I think about Jesus, uh, three and a half years of service, um, he used boats and he launched out. Like he would ask them, can I borrow your boat? He, now, now the, the thing is, is that he was giving a message to a specific audience, mm -hmm. his 12. Others heard on, mm -hmm. but he was investing in his 12. So the message was still spreading and getting out. Sometimes he would ask to borrow boats. And he even asked to use the upper room. He used, you know, he, I need to borrow your donkey. Like mm -hmm. it, the Lord used different means and mess, modes to, to get to, to get his voice projected mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. He could have stayed right there in his little hometown and not go any further, but he continued to move and, and launch out. So yeah. we're doing the same. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I believe that if he was here, he definitely would be doing the same. They have a podcast. Uh -huh. I believe that he would, and he would talk about it. Yeshua's mm -hmm. podcast. That's, uh -huh. that's funny. Yeah, he would talk about it. Uh, so with that being said, we are we, – we, we, remember we told you or we posted – uh, like pray for us and we would tell you why we've been away for a while. Um, do you know those chairs that are, that are in the hospital? Jesus. That was our bed for maybe was ten it 10 days. to 14 days. Ten, yeah. Uh, for almost two weeks, that was our bed. And um, our youngest son, his appendix ruptured. 
Mm-hmm. Now that's a whole nother thing because mm-hmm. I'm not sure if a lot of what he dealt with, he would not have to have dealt with it had they immediately rushed him to the back once they found out. To the first hospital. What yeah. was going on. But it was it was like his fever was extremely high. Um the pain was excruciating. Um, it was beyond 10, yeah. you know, because, you know, the, in, in the hospitals, they measure it mm-hmm. 1 to 10. It was beyond 10. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so it was like it really was um, touch and go for us just kind of watching. And then, of course, to find out something. I don't know if I can, can Mm-mm. I say that now? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, to find out some other news about, you know, his um, his issue that was going on. We'll probably tell it later on. But um, for me, it was... You, may I say something before you go f- further? Okay. Because even in setting up so now, mind you, he's going through abdominal pain. Mm-hmm. We then find out that it was the appendix uh, rupturing. Mm-hmm. Um, but now this is also during one of the coldest <laughs> weeks in Memphis, in Memphis Tennessee, Tennessee right. uh, of 2024. So we got more. We have like three to four inches of snow. It's, ex- it's below zero uh degrees of coldness. Uh yeah. Was it below? Yeah, it was below. Right. It was it was it was sub zero uh okay. temperatures. And and so ice. yeah. Yeah, it was ice and snow mixed mm-hmm. together. And if you know anything about Memphis drivers, in Memphis we're not good period. But we're not good <laughs> specifically ice and snow. Yeah. And it's a it's a whole nother dynamic beast yeah. on I two forty. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so again, this is not like Get him there. Get him there. You know, it's like, oh, Jesus, how are we going to get through? We need to get him covered up. Oh, we need the, the car need to defrost. You got to be able to see. You got to scrape the ice off. It, it was a lot. And I had maybe maybe a small. I'm driving like this because I, I, I can't really see. And the, the defrost is on high uh-huh, but or it's, it's on hell because yeah. I need it as hot as possible to get some of the stuff uh but here's a, here's a thankful, thankful. And that's, and that's doing sub-zero. I had a cardboard on my side. Mercy, yeah. But it still didn't work because I didn't cover it that well. But I had nothing in the back. Um, there wasn't enough road. It's like it's like a piece of a road, but you can't really see because it's still white. I'm not sure if it's ice or is it snow or whatever the case may be. So um, gaining that traction right. was something different, like navigating the road. So so here's here's for me. My heart goes out to parents who have lost a child. Yeah. Um, it's, it was just the mm. glimpse of the could be. So I was talking to a young lady one time, an older lady, and she was telling me about how how it feels we were talking about the loss of a mother, especially if you have a mother who's been in your life and you know, your loving mother, and how when you lose a parent or your mother's losing a mother, how hurtful it was. She said, yeah, I've lost a mother, and that hurts. She said, but there's nothing like the pain of losing, of having to bury your child. I see. Because in the natural way we think things should be done, and now, now this young lady, I mean, this lady is not, she's not, it wasn't even a, a child child. It was her son who's, you know, 30, 40 years old, but she still had to bury her son. And so that's a different kind of pain, she said, having to bury your own child. And so for me, I kept, that, that's what kind of kept me, and I wasn't in a good headspace. Because yeah. in my mind, I'm saying, it could be, man, like, well, which, which, you know, we're trying to see what's going on and we're trying to figure out. And I'm, I'm looking, and I'm like, okay. It's not. It's not looking good. You know yeah. what I'm saying. I'm not sure yeah. how bad it is, but for me, you know, it wasn't added. This up, is not because right. this is not his personality. He's not bouncing back. We can't get the temperature down. We can't get the temperature down. We can't. I'm like, I hope it don't get to 103. Like, like, yeah. It, it, so yeah. for me, so we just weren't. I think it was at 103. We. I think it yeah. was. Um, it's which means because if it's too high, I'm not. If y'all let us know what is the part where it becomes it could be brain damage if the temperature's too high. Mm-hmm. I think it's 103 or 104, something like that. And so um, it was good. Now, our son is a young adult. However, he's not in any position really to be by himself. 
And I just believe this is me. Um, when you have loved ones who are either in the hospital or in nursing homes, it's always good for somebody to always be there as much as possible. They need to know that there's always somebody there. That their patient has family, that they are loved. Yeah. yeah that yeah, they yeah. are ca well cared for. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so so there's not a lot of gaps where the people who are on staff would slack on their job. You, yeah. you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And I've experienced that with my mom as well. My mm -hmm. mom was in a nursing home. and for So I'm my only child, so it was kind of hard for me to kind of just do it by myself, so there were a lot of gaps. But then my auntie, who was her sister, she would go. So she would be there during the day. And she would, uh, she would try to do it every day, but she would be there a lot during the daytime. I would go at nighttime. It's not as much time with her at nighttime because she would fall asleep. Uh, let me tell a funny story. It used, to, it used to make me mad, but I get it that my, my, my loved ones were really just looking out for their sister. And so they, they tried to press me one time about going to see my mom, not knowing that I was seeing her every night. But my mom would be asleep. So she don't know I'm there. And when they would ask her, has Patrick come to see her? And she was like, no, nah, he hadn't seen me. But she don't know I'm there, and I don't want to wake her up because I don't know what kind of risk she had at that time. You Pause, okay. which is a whole nother dynamic. Right. Because this is the thing. When you are in a hospital or you are in a assisted living or nursing facility, you have bells and whistles, yells that All are the going like clockwork. And so we say that, that they need rest and recovery, like hold the visitations. Like I understand that now because right when you try to grab, your, your loved one try to grab their sleep or mm -hmm. you trying to grab their sleep, mm -hmm. it's a knock at the door. It's a prod in your skin. It's a check in the IV. It's the beeps going off. If it's not your machine going off, it's, it's the, the next, next to you, you know, right. Then the walls are thin as ice. It's somebody yelling, screaming, help! It's nothing wrong with it because right. you're supposed to do that. Correct. But my point is, is that the, the rest is so valuable. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's so scares and yeah and yeah. so i can understand more now like you saying don't wake her because i don't know when's the last time she got us sleep yeah. and it's finally quiet correct you right. know and so but but we had we eventually had a team and so my son my oldest son would go at a certain time um and then he would take his siblings at one time i'm going at another time Shamika's coming with me at another time. My auntie is there. And then my uncle on my dad's side, he would go every Sunday. And I think because of that team of people that there isn't a set time. And then Patrick and I would be a little bit strategic about time and place. I mean, about time and time of day. Uh, day and time to go because we always wanted to be a surprise that mm -hmm. someone is here visiting. My mom is calling Miss Fine, Miss Fine. And so I think because we were that way with our son at the at the hospital that the nurses began to give more quality care. More the quali doctors now, too? I'm not sure if, I don't know. Maybe that's just how they are. But I know we made sure because he wasn't able to ask the right questions mm -hmm. or the necessary questions that needed to be asked during the time. And so and then when you take your medicines and different prescriptions or whatever, some things you can remember, and then you go to sleep, and then you don't remember it. Sometimes the pain can overshadow what you heard, yeah. you know. Um, I, and I will say, I think you just mentioned about us being there. Like, I, I would honestly say that that would be one of those times I was extremely grateful for the flexibility of our profession. Being an entrepreneur. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. It came with, it, it comes with its uh, uh, plus and minuses, mm -hmm. you know. It comes with. It's perks and disadvantages. So one of the perks is that uh, should a loved one, a friend, or someone need you, you can be there. You can make the necessary adjustments. Mm -hmm. By the same token, if you don't work, you don't eat. So yeah. now that's where the angst came. And me and Patrick, it's like, okay, we have saved something, mm -hmm. but then is this going to match up? Like right. the, the bill is still incurring. 
um, our bills are still needing attention because when he get out the hospital, he need a place <laughs> to to uh, to receive light and heat, and we need right. transportation. Like those things still need to need to be taken care of, and so I think that that's the part that we have well, that we want to discuss too, is making sure that you know how to uh, manage and navigate uh, the life happenings because they're going to happen. Mm. Uh -huh. I think Rich Dad Poor Dad had a quadrant, and it was a business investment. Uh, I think it was S self-employed, and there was another one. So even if you're self-employed, you're still trading time for money, and so it would be um, it would be wise to learn how to invest or long-term investment. I think that was the fourth quadrant. Yeah, because I think it's. Employee, self-employed, corporation, investing. Investing. Yeah. And so, two of the two of the quadrants allow for that time to be able to um, see about your loved ones and the money not stop. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. However long it take, and that would be the business and the investment. Uh, but anyway, so we were there, and um, like I said, that chair became. Our bed, yeah, I will and say, and it don't yeah. it, it it don't move, it, yeah, it don't, it don't flatten up. out yeah. enough mm -mm. for you to get good a good rest. Um, and listen, but let me say, it's something about a mother's love and a father's love when they kick in. Who cares about how that chair feel? Mm -hmm. And nothing can be compared to being in that bed. And so that was my solidarity with my son. It's like if you have to be prodded and have machines and all kinds of things, and all I have is this uncomfortable chair mm -hmm. that does recline, mm -hmm. amen? I, I, at, at least I, I was given some, some warm blankets and sheets and pillows. Yeah. I'm fine. Why? Because I can get up and I can move around. You can't. Yeah. So I'm about to cry. That, that's just touching, but it's like, oh, my goodness. Like you just, to me, that chair if if I could say the, the ministry of the chair, if that chair could <laughs> talk and tell and tell you how yeah, it served me well, Amen. My life changed and my mind shifted in that chair. Yeah. Thank God that I didn't have to stand there the whole time. But if I needed to, I would have did that too. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been a problem. Waiting on God and waiting on my son and serving with the man of my my dreams. No problem. No problem at all. Yeah. Now, Lord, I am not saying that you have to test me to stand there. <laughs> but what I am saying is that I'm grateful for the ministry of the chair. Mm -hmm. And I learned so much. My life shifted. Uh, I was able to show up better in this in the, on this couch mm -hmm. as a result of that chair mm -hmm. because class was indeed in session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was, it, it, it <laughs> okay, pause. I, I think, fa fa go ahead. Patrick's there. Look, uh, let, me, let, me, let me go for um, But in that chair, I learned the power of community. Every text message, yeah. every phone call, yep. every come by, Every meal given. Look, y'all, I understand. I didn't understand it to the fullest mm -hmm. prior to that, doing that week or two. But when I tell you our godparents came through we prayers, ran the list down of all the people that were there, whether it be financially, text messages, food. Emotionally. Uh, yeah. Emotionally, visits. Um if there was ever, if there was, if there was ever a question about being loved, I don't think we have that. I don't think we have that. And that like, we don't have that question anymore. That, like, we can never go and think we're not loved as, as Patrick and Shamika. You know what I'm saying? We can't. Amen. I just think about, and so, I'm not going to go ahead. And when I tell y'all, when, when, when our son first started going through, like, I know I said the power of community, but when I say that, like the community, but also the church, like to know that it is that there are prayer warriors ready to receive mm -hmm. your prayer request. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a real like mm -hmm. it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. Put him on the list. Put us on the list because life is happening. Mm -hmm. And it's like we, you know, that Sprite is not making it go away this time. Mm -hmm. There's no Gatorade this time. There's no, mm -hmm. like, this is something more serious. But 
when I tell you to to have a a, a family, to, f a friends uh, that are in the medical field that can say, "Get yeah. them there now! Get them yeah. there now!" Like I, whoo! When I tell y'all, I, I, I'm grateful to God. Going back to that chair, I've learned the 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 power of the church, how each member supply to the next member when it's needed and and thank god that friendship was developed mm -hmm. and that a phone it was truly a phone call away mm -hmm. it was a visit away mm -hmm. and for the for our loved ones our community our church to pause as we were going through mm -hmm. and even they made adjustments yeah. they made adjustments financially because now, not only, check this out, not only, and this is not to dump on y'all, but we just want y'all to know that this is not just showy show. <laughs> but as, as, as our son was going through getting seen, then our p pipes burst. Oh, yeah. And I, in my mind, I was like, oh, dear God. This was my prayer to the Lord. I said, oh, dear God. I cannot call Patrick with this one. Now, so set that up. The reason why she can't call me because because I'm at the hospital with our son. And again, because the streets are frozen and the, the, the temperature is below zero, really at this point because what, what happened on our way there, it started sprinkling, which made the streets worse. So that means... I'm stuck at the hospital anyway. I can't even come home to figure out what, what's going on, you know what I'm saying, or how to stop the situation. Go ahead. And now this is to the dads and the moms. This is why it's important for you to train your children in a way they should go. Spiritually, yes, but in all things, too. Mm -hmm. Because when Patrick was dealing with one son, the other son was home and another daughter was home. Mm -hmm. So we are talking, we are praying. As a matter of fact, it's so funny. My youngest daughter could see the the worry that that I thought that I was concealing pretty good. <laughs> but she said, "You come on, you're gonna learn how to knit." So I was in the middle of learning how to do the stitch the or the needling or whatever the case may be, and all of a sudden I hear this. Shoo! I was like, "What is that?" She said, I don't hear nothing. I said, you don't hear that? I said, oh, dear God. That, that, that's just my brother. I'm like, Jesus, where's the water? And immediately, as I'm in the house looking for where the water is flowing, mm -hmm. then my daughter kicks in and say, Patrick, go outside and shut it off. Mm -hmm. Shut it off. Shut it off. Now, I have to move fast because I got to find where the water is because once it starts flowing, then guess what? then we don't know where the water coming from. Mm -hmm. But my point is, is that if Patrick hadn't taught them how to shut the water off, where the box is to deal with the uh, elect the electrical stuff. Anyway, teaching them how to care well for a home. Right. That because he's not home, they knew how to step in. So it was really all hands on deck. And my, my, my brother, my friend, he's actually yeah. so, so, the, ch the yeah. church that I pastor, I have five. So we're part of an organization, but initially we didn't start out that. And so I had to put five men over me to hold me accountable. And my brother, my friend, Frank, yeah. who has a podcast uh, called Listen, Let Me Be Frank. Yeah. Listen, Let Me Be Frank. That's the name of the podcast. So she had to call or she called him because she's like, I can't call this man. I can't call my husband. I can't, I can't call, call him, Patrick. But she was yeah. like, I can't call this man. But I can't uh -huh. call this. I can't call my husband and tell him what's going on. Although I need to call him and tell him what's going on. So she calls Nashville. She don't call nobody in Memphis. Mm -mm. She calls someone in Nashville or Nashville to tell <laughs> them, part time you're from, to tell them what's going on. Yeah. And then Frank, because Frank old school like I am, we're going to have to call Patrick because two men about to come in his house and he's not at home. So he needs to know what's, what was about to happen. Now, the two men coming in just happened to be, just happened to be Ten minutes people away. we knew mm -hmm. from 1999, starting on them in 1999 when I gave my life to Christ. His, this pastor had a son who 
changed his life around, and now he has a business mm -hmm. in the very thing that we need. Yeah. And he just happened to be five, ten minutes away from my house working on another pipe. Yeah. So he calls him. And, and say, I got it. And, and when I tell I you yeah. that, sir. But going back to, to the, the friendship uh, with the Walkers, when right. I tell you, you, I knew that they could hear the panic in my voice because they was like, you good. Him and his wife, they had me on speakerphone. And uh, it's like, you good. I say, are y'all by yourself? It's like, what's going on? I'm like, are y'all by yourself? I need, I need, I need, I need help. I, I, I'm, it's like, we hear you. You good. You good. You have our attention. And so I was like, this is what's happening. And I cannot call him. How do I approach it? How do I handle this problem? And so, again, it's going back to that community. So every couple need to have somebody mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a couple friend or someone that's that, that that you know that you can lean on in, in your time of need. Right. No one couple or no one person has all the answers. Could it be then also it takes it takes a village to raise a child that that same village is needed to keep a family. Keep a, yeah, yeah, guess, to yeah, keep to keep the village. Keep yeah. Family. Yeah. Uh -huh. Keep it together because when I tell you Frank and, and Tina walked me clean through that, and yeah. I had so much peace. Walkers. Walkers. The, the walkers. <laughs> they helped me to walk by faith. They have a ministry called Walk by Faith, too. Mm -hmm. um, but they helped us to walk, help me to walk by faith. And I could even tell that Patrick had a great level of comfort because he knew that his dear friend, someone that has gone through the trenches with us, right. was there to offer help and that he could fully I be. I could trust him. Uh-huh. He trusts him, even at a distance. Correct. Now, that says a lot. But it's nothing like faithful, trustworthy friends yeah. that his integrity, their character, their, uh, their reputation, mm -hmm. it exceeded them. Even miles, hundreds of miles away, yeah. that it was no questions asked, no finagling. And it was interesting when they left because, you know, we hadn't worked. But the little cash that I did have, I was going to get them there for gas because I'm like, look, you need money, too. Like, we're mm -hmm. in the business of, of self-employment. So we understand what that's all about. Child, them folks said, no, ma'am, you need to put that up. Because it's taken care of. Mm -hmm. I said, huh? Yeah, we good. You okay? Mm -hmm. You okay? And mm -hmm. we pray I'll be well with you. We look forward to hearing back from y'all, and, and we'll get all this stuff taken care of. Needless to say, that it's a hole in the wall and the tile in the... I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, it's a hole in the wall, and it's and, and, and it, the tile has been shifted in the floor, but guess what? Just no guess right now, because we're going to get it fixed, <laughs> all right? right. <laughs> Amen. But again, it's making those adjustments. Yeah. Right, go ahead. Um... We said all that to say. <laughs> we missed uh -huh. y'all too. We, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, we, I promise we're not dumping, but we just wanted you I'm to dumping. know. <laughs> I'm, I'm dumping. You can't dump on the people. Man. I can, can dump. dump. Yeah. yeah. If we're going to be friends, amen, we're going to be we're friends, family. then we're going to be friends. We're going to be family. Yeah. Amen. We're going to be family. We're going right. to be family. Okay. So then the other thing too is in the midst. Now, you know, Patrick and I are big on relation, marriage relationship, and we're big on being there engaging the faith, engaging the family, and engaging with one another through the life happenings. That's mm -hmm. what that's how I always tell people when they would call and check or when I was you know, you know, different clients calling, I can't come in, life is happening. But anyway, Patrick and I still carved out time to process what the happenings that were happening, to find out what insights are you getting? Are you okay? Uh, what's on your mind? We prayed together more. We we had to uh, we had to protect our space more. Mm -hmm. We had to let go. It was so fun. I had to let go of one of the people that I never thought that. Look, look I had been wrestling with this thing for years, but I was able to freely let it go. If they're not there, I can't I can't make I can't focus in on it right now. Mm -hmm. And so when it's time for them to come back. By faith, I pray my heart will be free and open to forgiveness. But meanwhile, I'm going to be serving where I'm called to serve. But anyway, one of the uh, the interesting highlights that I was like, oh, wow, God, that is interesting. When our son finally got some good rest, this was during a time where he didn't have the machines and stuff on him. Right. And Patrick asked me out on a date. <laughs> 
he asked me to go to the vending machine <laughs> and we shared a frappuccino. You know why? Because we realized we didn't have enough for two. Well, no, we had enough, but the machine wouldn't take the card. Oh, yeah. We didn't that's have right. enough cash. Yeah, that's okay. We, we didn't have enough cash. Right. But and the machine wouldn't take two, so we had to share uh -huh. one. We shared we shared a mocha together. Right. We had a we had a coffee break and we dated in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. It was just us and we just talked and we just was processing it and figuring it out. And it was just good. It was just good to hold one another and to reassure one another that we didn't do anything wrong. It's just this is life. Like it, everyone we talk to saying, you don't know that it's going to happen. Correct. You know, it's not like, okay, if you tall and you play ball, then Nine yours going to yeah. burst. Yeah, no right, one knows. Right. No one knows that. Mm -hmm. and, and so her saying that was, as, as a married couple, <clears throat> you have, this goes to all the videos that we've talked about, the word intentional. That even in the midst of being intentional to date is all the more necessary to carve out date time. Now, it wasn't that we would go ahead. And and dating, and I and I think I want to I want to redefine this. This dating is not just for the moment of just being in each other's presence. You really are carving out time to connect. Mm -hmm. You are trying to, you are making time to fully engage and connect with your husband, with your wife in the midst of life. Because guess what? We can be sharing things and doing things together and we're together. But then sometimes you may find yourself disconnecting in the midst of the, you know, doing the life responsibilities. Because that can happen. Yeah. Like there can be so much going on that you can't, that you have no control over. Um, whether it be sickness or death in the family or loss of a job, like all those things are taking away time from me, from you connecting with your spouse, that it all the more is necessary for you again to be intentional to connect. Mm -hmm. uh, another reason why I I wanted because we were on the go, it was it was always on the go, on the go, on the go, on the go, on the go. I think the first because of the weather or the ice and the and the snow. The first three days, I was at the hospital by myself. Yeah, we didn't even see each other. Um, yeah. I think she came the fourth day. Mm -hmm. And then that fifth day, the fourth day we did together, that fifth day, I went home by myself. Uh -uh. I, I, don't think it was, I think it was two days, two or three days later. Okay. We stayed up there the first because it was so, um, yeah. I don't think but you we, went home. But we had to, so we had to, I know at one point I needed to go and she stayed up there. And then she came. We had to tag team. And, we, and, then, we mm -hmm. went, and then we stayed together mm -hmm. um, just because. So, so for me, it's like when you're, when you're in a situation like that, it's always good to have, not the patient, but it's always good to have two other ears there because she might hear something that I didn't hear and I might hear something that she didn't hear. And so you can say, well, yeah, one of y'all could have stayed home. Well, Yes, that is true. However, when you're dealing in those situations, just my philosophy is that there should be more than just the patient's ear there. It should be two other ears, two other sets of ears to be able to hear or ask questions that may not have been asked. Um, so, so we're there. And the, one of the reasons why I wanted to get away and just kind of debrief or to talk about it or to just kind of exhale a little bit mm. this is because we were all we just we're <laughs> we're just going we're going we're going we're going You're on adrenaline. and we're not yeah we're not taking the time to whew, figure things out it's just okay go 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 now the reason why i understand that because of my experience here's what i mean when my dad died i went from i went i had to go straight from son to primary caregiver and so my mom has multiple sclerosis and she has diabetes and so there's all these things and that i wasn't aware of uh that she needed her pills and all this kind of stuff because my dad took care of all that because he told me that's his wife but now i'm jumping into this new role and trying to and burying my dad at the same time that i hadn't had time to grieve 
So it took me 10 years to find a place to grieve. And it was at six. Mm -hmm. Huh? I think it was six years. I thought I think it was 10 years. It took me 10 years. <laughs> he gonna stick with it, y'all. <laughs> to find time to grieve. And it was at a family reunion. And I was about to preach at the family reunion. Family, re family reunion. And I looked out and saw all these faces except for my dad. And... Let's say five, just go. Five years of holding the grief in, yeah. not being able to release, it all came flooded out at that time. And I couldn't talk. I felt I was, I, was my, my, I couldn't breathe right. And I just, it just balled out. And so for me, I'm like, okay, we need, to, we need space, mm. you know process, what I'm saying, to yeah. process. Let's go on a date, you know what I'm saying. Thank you for that. Let's, let's go on a date. So let's go to a place. You know, I, I for some reason I asked some, I, uh, one of the people on the, the nurses did was there a waiting room? She told me there wasn't one, and I knew it was, and so I walked and found it, and then uh, we went in there, cut the lights off. It wasn't like pitch black dark, but it was you it was enough for us to be able to just so, yeah. be in each other's presence, and we were able to uh, have time. We got a half time, yeah, um, intermission, yeah, before we got back into the groove of taking care of making sure our son was taken care of. Yeah, and and I do want to I want I want to highlight this point too. Is in the midst of life happenings, and in the midst of you assuming responsibility, it doesn't matter if if it's doing a medical emergency, if it's doing loss of or let's say you're in the grieving process, sudden loss, if there is in the midst of uh, your jo a job loss, a uh, relational. Uh, tensions or whatever the enemy don't stop mm, that's deep. he does not stop and so we have to make sure and my good friend Ansley shared this with me too recently we have to make sure that not only we have strategy but we have tactics to get the job done mm -hmm. like if I am passionate and, and let me say this I am passionate about my relationship, my family relationship, then I have to make sure that I am implement, implementing the gate, the plays in order to keep active and to stay vigilant against the evil one who does not relent. Mm. He could care less about what you didn't lose, who you didn't lose, what you're going through. He see it as an open door to, I'm talking about, all the more annihilate you. And so with that being said, make sure that you um, connect with your spouse. Mm -hmm. And it's best that we do this on the good days. On the, on the front end. On the good days, on the front end, because right. we know that dark days are coming. We can, can sometimes look out and we can see storm clouds rolling through. Hmm. It's something about when you prepare for your storm, your, sh your shelter for the storm, it makes you going through the storm a lot more uh, um, uh, attainable or it makes it more, it makes it more able, make you more able. It, it make it, yeah, mm -hmm. it makes it easier. Yeah. Not easy. Yeah. It makes it easier. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because when we come out of that storm shelter, it's going to be a lot of fallout. It's going to be a lot of cleanup. It's going to be debris everywhere, and it's going to take a whole nother, you know, the recovery. And that's something else. Y'all, this is a long episode. That's but, this good. But, th but listen, after we finish going through that, now we're going through recovery. And can I tell you, I done made up this new term, recovery fatigue. Mm -hmm. It's like I know that we are headed in the right direction, and we can see improvement, but you're not out the woods yet. Yeah. And I'm ready to go home. Yeah. My son mm -hmm. is ready to go home mm -hmm. to get rest, to be in a place of familiarity, right. to be able to have the comforts of home, to be able to receive the quality care. And it's like, yeah, but no. Mm -hmm. No, no, you can't go yet because we found something else. Mm. That nope, was deep. you can't go because there's some, but wait, there's more. It's like a, a, a medical I infomercial. Could, I could, <laughs> that's funny. And I could see 
the the disappointment in his face when they said we found something else. Yeah. You know, you can't go home right now. We found something else. We need to keep you a little while. I just saw it, and that's when I broke, cause I was I was tired for him, and I was like another thing, and and I I I I. I started to get. We still recovering too. <laughs> this is new. It's still fresh. I started to get mad at God. Yeah. Because I felt like um, I was in another situation with my mom. Like, why? Why won't you come and do something about this? You know what I'm saying? Why is there something else that we're dealing with? And if you know my mom, me, me and God, and thank God. God didn't take my breath away, but I was mad at God because he wouldn't heal my mom. Yeah. I'm like, you got to do something. I don't want to see the di digression mm -hmm. of her health while multiple, scler multiple sclerosis progresses. And we, we're having an issue, God. What are we doing? So when when they said there's something else, I, I, I thought about my mom. Now, I'm not saying it was, no, it was a like the same issue. I don't want to say it. I don't want to. Say it was the same issue with my son, but it was like, come on, God, what do you see? What he dealing with? Like, come on, let the body do what it's what you designed it to do. Mm -hmm. Like, let it kick in, so we can go home. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. I saw that in his face, and I had to get out. I had to walk away because I didn't want him to see me Your break frustration. Yeah. yeah, or mad or frustrated about uh -huh. about his condition issue. And and it's interesting that fatigue. The, the symptoms of uh, the the the, yeah, the symptoms of fatigue would show up in different ways. In Patrick's case, he's just expressed that it, it was the, the the impatience, like I'm tired now, I'm ready to go, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or it's anger. It may it may pop up like that, and so and again, it may be just. Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, but you said something I want to go back to about, pr like, before these things happen, that like even in the storm and you're in the shelter. When you get out, there's a de there's debris everywhere mm -hmm. that's gone out. But here's the thing. This is what I, I mean by is it was good. A lot of times, when you, especially when you have, like, those type of storms and stuff like that, the foundation is that you come on there, Joy. Hey, Bubba. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, we, it's okay. Well, see, you know what? I don't know because sometimes when we hear uh, what you call it, the street, Driving okay. his car and burning rubble and stuff like that, uh -huh. we don't hear it in the video. Okay, come on, so come on. yeah, anyway, <laughs> so so the foundation is always there. So wh why did I say that? It's necessary. Bef th things are going to happen because life is falling. Sin is in the world. We live so in a fallen world. Yeah, 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 we're yeah, living in the fallen world. So. Um, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, uh, what was Flame's album? Our World Fallen? Mm -hmm. Flame, Our World Fallen. Go get it. So, it is necessary to build a, a, a firm foundation before things happen. So that if things blow away or if things happen and there's debris and you have to pick up, you can rebuild on the foundation that has been laid. In uh -huh. storms. That's good. And they go back to their build and sustain. Because you try to build this marriage out if you want to without the Lord, without following his instructions, mm -hmm. without being aware of his mind in this uh, this sacred and intimate relationship. And you are going to experience great disappointment yeah. because the rains are going to fall. I don't know if y'all read the text, but the rains going to fall. And you can have your house on saying if you want to. Uh, it's going to wash away. Yeah. Or you can build on that solid rock. And uh, you build on that rock, that foundation of Christ, I tell you, he will make sure that he will be your safe place to see you through. Right. That does not mean that, that it is without tears. You may have to hold on crying your eyeballs out. Yeah. You may have to hold on not, uh, let me say this, you may have to hold on wondering how long. Mm. How long? But this, you, look, your faith, your life depends on it. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make the make make the decision and the choice today uh, to to prepare as best as possible. Yeah. 
uh, because we can't know all things. We don't know what, what, what we would have to have to face and contend with. Yeah. But when you have practiced these spiritual disciplines of prayer, of fasting, of, of fellowshipping with uh, fellow believers, brothers and sisters in mm -hmm. the faith, when your day come, not if your day come, mm -hmm. but when your day come, you're going to just keep on doing what you know that you have been preparing for. Mm -hmm. What you're going to do, you're going to pray to the Father. You're going to leave it in his hands. You're going to tell your community, this is what we need. Right. You're going to be able to have the faith to hold on. You'll be able to ha have arm power, arm strength to hold up mm -hmm. that shield of faith. And when you have more shields that's in, in, you know, involved, then we can create a whole nother fortress. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's something about the power of faith. It'll hide you and keep you. Amen. Mm -hmm. I feel my help kicking in, y'all. It will hide and keep you from the hell storms. Get it? The hell storms. Because hell is relentless. It's going to always look for gaps and ways to annihilate and take you out. Why? They don't want your testimony in the earth. The enemy don't want you to tell your story. He don't want you to live through this thing. But, oh, when we do, and we come back with the testimony, this is how we overcome yeah. by the blood of the Lamb. And the word of our testimony. Amen. What you got to say about it? Amen. Amen. I feel my and help. And then my, mm -hmm. our son's boss was so clutch. Um, so my son's supposed to, he's, he's going to graduate this year. But again. Life. Yeah. It was crazy. And so she became the liaison mm -hmm. between Nate and us I mean, between uh, yeah between and Nate and his school look to, to the make point. sure mm -hmm. that the professors that the dean of students that the president that all those who are um could hear or to just to let them know or get the word to them about what was going on for me it was I didn't have to do that yes there was something taken off the plate again. They so go that relieved the stress for us that she was able to just talk to people at the school and on to our on our behalf. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm appreciative for what she did. Yeah, and none like a mediator. Yeah. When I tell you, y'all, it was it was a lot. Uh, uh, I, I can remember one day I was so hungry and I just wanted a home-cooked meal. My godmama got up on them icy streets and brought <laughs> me some homemade cornbread, amen, mm -hmm. and some homemade beef stew. stew yeah. And I'll tell you, when it touched the soul, it just touched the soul. <laughs> I tell you, it was just, yeah, just looking back, I didn't, we didn't have to worry about, you know, in a way, people, get, it was just amazing. It was. Yeah, it, yeah, it was, it was good stuff. So, a lot of things we said, if this video is encouraging to you, we're asking you to send it to somebody else. Yeah. Let somebody else know that they're not alone, mm. uh, that all of us as saints we're going through, and if this video could touch their heart, and if it touched your heart, if it touched your heart, Please like it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and comment, touch and, my heart. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> comment, touch my heart. Touch my heart. Uh, <laughs> subscribe to the to the video. Hit the bell notification. So when we drop new videos, you'll be the first to get there. And we thank you, family, for giving us your listening ear and allowing us to yeah. be able to vent and to be able to get out what we're going th or what we've been through. Uh, and continue to keep our son in your prayers. Um, we're not out, but we're out. Yeah. Um, and so I tell you, one of the things, one of my, one of the, 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 the indicators that I will say uh, that I kept looking for was his humor returning. Yeah. He's so uh, humorous. And so, yeah, when that started to come back around, I was like, yeah, he comes okay, back. Okay. We, yeah, yeah, you know, not saying we good, but we good. And right. so, you know, uh, uh, one more thing. I know you gave the closing, but I was thinking about a lot of it's times. Like preachers, preachers give a closing uh, and then they take 15 more minutes. <laughs> I promise it's not going to take ahead. 15 As minutes. I close. But this is a life lesson. Uh, we cannot allow the enemy to steal our praise hmm. because progress has been made and God still wants the glory right there in their place. Mm -hmm. It may not look like how we want it to look, but it surely is not what it was. And for that, we're going to stop and tell the Lord thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to give him the glory in this space and place because God is good and he is worthy of our praise. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, so since you said that, I'm going to read this. Oh See, now God. it ain't me, y'all, because we could have stopped it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, so, so it says, and, and this is the part. So it says, Philippians 4, uh, 
six through six through seven, six and seven. It says, "Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, but in everything, but in everything." This is the uh, New King James Version. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And here's the thing: and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. In other words, that even in the midst of everything, we were looking back and we were saying, okay, thank God for this. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for this. And I thank God for that. You know, even when I was about to go on the deep end one time, Shemik said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Let's thank him for boom, 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 boom. And so I began, one, one version says, uh, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. In the prayer, tell God what you need. And thank him for everything he's done. That's it. And when you do that, there's a peace that passes all understanding. I don't understand why I still have peace in the midst of these trials. I don't understand why I still have peace in the midst of this hell. I don't understand why I still have peace in the midst of this storm. I don't understand why I still have peace and things are not going my way. But what I am going to do, I'm going to tell him what I need. And I'm, I am going to thank him for everything that he's ever done in my life. Yeah. And just something about that allows peace or gives peace an invitation to come. Come and, on. And guard my heart. Or Make to, yourself at to home. To keep my heart from being anxious. Yeah. Remember, to be anxious for nothing. To keep my heart from being anxious. To keep my heart from worrying. To keep my heart from being frantic. To keep my heart from, 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 from being, check this out, from being blasphemous. Like, it's just something about it. It just guards the heart. And makes it it's a makes buffer. things yeah. stay back from it. So, Amen. Amen. Okay, preacher. Well, then let it come out then. Amen. Good? Amen. <laughs> All right, we'll see y'all in the next video. Take care. Bless. <laughs> okay, oh, preacher. Look at you. Got a lot of it.